Hey guys, uh, it's Jasper here, just checking in. Everybody keeps asking me about uh, how the homesteading's going for the first year, so I figured I'd give you guys a little walk around and uh, show you what's going on recently. So, over here, we got the Ruby, the Ruby Doobie. Yeah, she's getting big. We've had her just, what, about a month now? Yep. Yeah, she's doing real good. She's a happy girl. So... Like I said, people keep asking, so I wanted to give you a walk around and kind of see what we got going on. I don't know if I can flip the camera mid. Can I? No, no, I can't. All right. So, we got our parsley growing up real nice. We got some thyme coming in real good. Um, got some basil happening, some rosemary. Can't really see it very well, but we do have our... Our, uh... Our carrots coming in real good. Now, I was complaining like a motherfucker about this earlier, but if you look behind me here, this is where the corn and the peas are going to go, and it was a nightmare. Uh, it, uh, the soil was just so bad that we had to actually uh, purchase a bunch of, of compost, even though I make my own. So that's uh, the situation we had, so I had to, to take it all, till it into the ground, and... Um, it, it took quite a while and a couple of tillings before it finally got to where it needs to be. But rest assured, we're, we're good now. So moving back on, you know, we got our, our onions coming in real good. We got to pull these out real soon. They're, uh, they're looking pretty fine. Um, if anybody needs some strawberries, you might want to let me know because uh, we're, uh, <laughs> we're a little full. And if you come in, you can already see like uh, right there, we got a pretty big one coming in. And they're going to be ready in a few weeks, I'm pretty sure. You know, we got, um, uh, what do we got? Like seven, six, two, four. We got, we got six cucumbers coming in. We got a few more going into the ground shortly, but just one of those things that, uh, that take their time. So we'll get there when we get there. Now we got, we got a bunch of different raspberries and things. I got to weed around here yet, but they're all, they're all coming in real good. Um, you know, sunflowers, we got all of these coming up all the way down. They're going to take their time, but they'll get there when they do. Um, let's see. We got blackberries. We got blackberries out the actual ass. If you go down here, you can see all the three leaves, let it be situation here we got going on. It is just horrendous. The amount of blackberries and raspberries we've got happening here. I know I got to weed that. I'll, I'll get there soon. But, um... But our blueberries here coming in real nice. We got three different plants of those coming in. Um, let's see, what, what else we got going on here? Ugh, big step, big step. Um, oh, it's supposed to be onion grass, but it kind of went to seed already. But we'll, uh, we'll be all right with that. We already got our, our red lettuce coming in real nice. We got a few of those. That box, that's actually from last year, so the previous owners actually had planted that, and we're just getting really lucky with how everything's coming in naturally, not really having many problems. We got our first few overgrown mints coming in. You know, they're they're doing real fine, but um, let's see, what else we got? Got, you know, green bell peppers coming in real good. They're starting to show their faces. Got about 19 more of those going into the ground. It's, it's a little ridiculous. Now, this year is my wife's pride and joy. She's been working really hard on making sure that we have all of the seedlings ready to go to put into ground. And I got to give it to her because she's worked beyond hard to make sure all this is working out. And if you look, I don't, I don't know if I can get the angle right, but you know, we got everything from peppers, habaneros to um, mint and chives and basil and all of this corn and peas and and all of these different types of tomatoes and onion and spinach and lettuce. I, I, it's ridiculous the amount of stuff we're trying to put in the ground. And then obviously we have down here, it's starting to show up a little bit. You can see right here, if you look really closely, we got a little bit of thyme coming in extra, a little bit of, a little bit of a massive extra basil coming in. Each one of these is gonna be their own plants and parsley's coming in real clean. And what do we got here? I can't even read anymore. Uh, the rosemary's starting to come in pretty good, and don't ask me about the chives. They're they're being a pain in the ass. We don't we don't talk about the chives, but that's the plants we got going on. A recent project we did after we got the puppy though is that a few of my friends know that when we moved in, 
this entire space here was actually all sand because previous owners wanted to put a pool in here and they left us the pool. But what happened was they managed to actually completely mismeasure everything. So we decided to sell the pool because it wasn't actually built yet. We had just had the parts on hand. And um, from there, oh, God, little stupid fence thing. Um, we decided to rip it all out, rip all the sand up. That took forever, mind you. Lay all of this topsoil down, lay grassy down here. And now we call this Ruby Land because Ruby has her own little space to go and, and play around and stuff when we're not taking for walks. I know we have a lot of land, but she's a fresh puppy. We don't want to just take her out and then end up being in a situation where she gets off the leash and then runs away because it'd be a royal pain in the ass out here to catch her. We don't even have cell phone service once we leave the house. So it can be really, uh, really difficult to try to catch her. So... I'm going to move on to the next thing that people keep asking me about, and that would be the chickens and how they're doing. So let me take just this little 10 second walk here and you'll see how these annoying little bastards have been doing. So do, 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 into the shed, get the light on. Oh, I'm sure you heard them. Oh. All right. So get the light on. Now, people keep asking me, like, how big are they supposed to get and, like, what's going on with them? So, we bought, we decided to purchase two different types of chickens. We decided to buy meat chickens, which are the Cornish Crosses. They're going to come out very juicy, very big, very quickly, and you'll see that in a moment. And then we also decided to buy um, egg layers, which they grow a little slower, but they're supposed to stay, they're supposed to be with you for three to five years. And they're going to continuously give you eggs until they hit about three to four, maybe even five. They they continue to produce, but slowly less after three years. So where we're at now is we're just trying to get them up to the point where we can move them to the chicken coops and that they will survive happily with the temperatures and not give us any problems. But here, let me show you one of the meat chickens first, because these guys have gotten really big really quick. Um, come here, you. All right, he's gonna be a little difficult. So, whoop. he's not very happy. Come on, roost up, roost up. So here we have a Cornish cross at three weeks, and you can already see how big he's gotten. Now, he's probably weighing about two pounds, and the rest of them I'm gonna show you in a second. I'm just gonna pan down, because they're a little difficult to work with yet. And this one's a rooster. He's actually starting to feel, whoop, 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 Get down, you dummy. Ah, uh, let me see if I can get him again. So, all right, the roosters started to get their little, their little mini beards, the little red beards at the bottom. Now, I'm going to show you what these guys look like. It's a little cramped in here. We're about to move them in the next day or two because they're getting too big for this. But if you look, here are all of our egg layer, or our meat chickens all just chilling out, getting the food that they need, getting as big as they can. So that when we move them down there, they're going to be perfectly fine with the temperatures. It looks a little cramped in there, but they actually only recommend a half a square foot of space until they hit the point where they move to the coop. So all you PETA guys out there understand that this is actually what it's supposed to be until they are moved down below, which is within the next half a week to a week from now. And then from there, they're actually going to have over 100 feet of lengthwise and about 15 feet otherwise. So they're going to have, you, you can do the math, more than enough space. Now, if you look here, we got ourselves, <laughs> you can hear them running around. They're, these are the skitty ones. They, uh, they really don't like to be either on camera or touch, to be perfectly honest. But if you look, I can't, I'm gonna have to review this photo then. But you can see, we got our, our egg layers here. And they're all wild and crazy, and they got the same amount of room as these guys. They're just a little more cramped because they're all scared of me. I keep trying, but I'm going to try to pick one up and show you exactly what they look like and where they're at now. But eh, they like to be a little difficult with me all the time, these guys. And I got to get these ones used to me. Okay, come here. Come on. Somebody's going to give up. There you are. There's the giver of the day. So here's our little, our, one of our little egg layers. They're perfectly content once you have them. I say that and then he decides to do that, exactly that, go figure. Ugh. So 
uh, if you look from that one to that one, you can see just how much more feathered out they are. And it's because these guys, uh, they put all of their, their protein and their growth into feathering out and growing like a normal animal would, whereas the meat chickens are actually bred to put their protein mostly to meat production. So we got a few chunkies in there, but we're uh, we're working on that. Sorry, they uh, they put me out of breath all the time. They uh, they keep me busy to say the least. But don't be worried. They're temperature controlled. They're food, water, everything. They're all taken care of. Like I said, I'll give you guys an update as soon as I move them to the coop because. It does take some time. We got to get them to where they can be and we got to keep them safe. And the little guys are still a little small to be uh, let loose into the coop. They'll walk right through the fencing and then they'll get wrapped by a raccoon or a bear or, or any of the other litany of things we got going on here. So I'm um, trying to think, is what else do I got going on? So we do have a four tree mini orchard going right now. It's nothing special, but if you look, we got... Cran apple going, so he's doing pretty good. Now these four, or these three, sorry, are all peach trees. And you can see that they're already starting to do their little budding and start doing their things. So that's where we're at with that. Um, people have been asking me about how I uh, have been dealing. Oh, wait, one more thing. We also have grapes. I completely forgot about these because they're just kind of a staple piece that are on the property. And you can see, if you look in here, we're actually starting to get our, our grape seedlings to start. Um, it's actually a pretty big plant overall. It takes its time, but we're, uh, we're working on that. Uh, it takes a little bit of fertilizer and a little bit of pruning and everything that I still got to come and do, but we're getting there. Um, but anyway, getting back to it, people keep asking me like everything about the wood situation because we, we only have wood heat on our property. So typically what we do is we go out onto the long stage of the property, which if you look, is all of that over there and it goes all the way down the road there. And I would love to show you that far, but I'm not going all the way down to the road. It's a pain in the ass. Um, but we own, I would say another probably quarter to a third of a mile the other direction there. And that whole opposite side there is ours. And we pull our, our, our trees from there, but this year specifically, we're planning on building an orchard over here and all of this space from there to there up to the road. So we had to take all of these trees down and people can ask me how that's going. And if you look, it's uh, it, it's going, it's, uh, it's a bit of a mess. It's taking its time and um, it just is what it is. It, it, it just takes a long period of time and I'd like to be able to edit this video down for the walk in betweens and, and all my random ramblings, but I don't really have the system to do that and I'm not planning on really doing anything crazy. But if you look, I, I'm trying to get these angles right. It um, It is quite a bit of wood that needs to be handled and it's it, it's not even half of it. So it uh, it is what it is. But it will be done within the next week. It's what I've been working on every day. My wife and I, she's been rolling down to me. I've been picking them up, putting them in the truck. Because, you know, these teeny tiny strong arms that seem to manage to do work that doesn't make any fucking sense anymore. Um, works out. So beyond that, what else have we taken care of so far this year? We got all of these coops up and running. So you can see that those same chicks are actually gonna have a very large space to run in. If you can see the green there, that is all of the fencing that goes all the way around. And then that shed there is actually the coop. So, ugh, bit of a mini cliff there. I'll show you inside of that just to prove it because a lot of people are so worried about whether or not we're actually taking care of these things. And it's kind of comical at a certain point, but you know, we're just trying to keep our animals safe. and. If we're gonna if we're gonna adopt them and we're going to do the things that we do with them, we we do ensure that they're they're cared for for what we need them for, right? And you can see I planted grass. I got to come in here and weed whack tomorrow, but I did it last week. It grows really quick. Um, it, it's it's a good spot. They'll be able to peck. They'll be able to do their thing. They won't have any issues managing any of that. And if we come inside, you'll see. And this is the egg layer one. We have another one down below. I 
debating on whether or not to bother showing you guys because it's pretty much the same thing, same space, everything. But they have two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 nesting boxes in here. And the size of this is about 10 by 10. So they actually have 100 square feet in here to be able to roam around. And they only recommend three square feet per chicken. And we got 19 of them coming in. So we're actually giving them 40 extra square feet of space to manage themselves. And to protect them, we have this bird netting that'll hopefully keep all of the birds of prey away, which we do have. We have hawks. We have, um, we actually do have uh, bald eagles and a few others. Um, we also do deal with bear. Sadly, I've been putting up with them recently. We do have fisher cats and foxes and coyotes and all of the wonderful things that you have living out in the country. Now, don't get me wrong. For the most part, the fencing and everything else that we have put up will keep them safe. If it does become a problem, we will go ahead and put electrical fencing up. I prefer not to do it because chickens are stupid and will probably try to jump into it. Um, I've heard a few stories from other chicken keepers that do actually have that problem, but I'm hoping it won't have to come to that. Sorry, it does take a minute to actually close this thing. Uh, now, like the only other thing that people have been actually bugging me about, and you can quit this video or fast forward at any time as you so choose, is um, like how much wood do you really need to supply your home and your family every year? And the truth is, it's about last winter was a little rough. We had a couple of negative temperature days and and stuff like that. So it typically is about three to four cords, but last year we used almost five and a half. So what we got going on with that is I have this whole lean to at the back of the barn, which I'm walking to right now, um, to show you what our operation looks like and, and how we manage that. But this year we're looking at actually doing about 12 cords, trying to get a, a year and a half, maybe two years ahead if we can. As We're doing as much as we can right now to try to um, adapt and overcome to the the life of a of a homesteader which is a really great thing and i i absolutely love it i know my wife loves it as well but you know we uh it's a lot of work up front it's a lot of money up front to get really started and and try to get it going and manage it um so if you look i'm actually going to back up here so you can see the whole barn but see we have this really nice barn and this whole setup here and and it's really nice because the upstairs is actually finished. It's really cool up there. And once I get it finished, I'll actually post a video about how we renovated that and how we turned it into what we want to. And I'll save that for a video later. But here is how we actually keep our wood and our situation once it's all um, up and stacked. So right now we have about three cords of wood finished. So we're about halfway through the year. Um, but as I showed you prior, we had a guy actually take down the video or take down a bunch of uh, trees down there. It's a personal friend of mine that, uh, that that actually owns his own business. And I'll let him decide if he wants to uh, get plugged in this one day. But we uh, so we we chip it and we stack it and we do everything right here. And then we stack it all, let it season out. And then um, when we're waiting for the process to happen, we actually bring all of our cut logs at 18 inches and we bring them up here. And we stack them up to let them dry out for a while. And then as we go, that's that's how we do what we do. So I don't think there's anything else right now because I don't have any updates on the shooting range and I don't have any updates on what the plans are for the perennial garden and the orchard right now because I got to get the trees out. But um, eventually we will have, and I'm trying to see if I got the angle right, we will have pegs up there in that spot because it's all flat land and that's next year's plan. I want to get the, the shelters up and, and the fencing and everything and take care of that. But beyond that, I don't know if it's all going to work out this year, but I'm going to do everything I can to get it all done. So this year we're working on garden, perennial garden, orchard, bigger orchard, chickens. Got to build a third coop for a few things that I found out about. And we're also working on the pig pen, the pig shelter and wood for the next couple of years. So I think it's needless to say that we are always busy, but it's very, very worth it. And I can honestly say that I'm blessed every single day to be able to actually take this journey 
and have met my wife who actually works this journey with me every single day. And there isn't a day that we're not busy. Today's actually the slowest day, which is why I'm able to actually take the 20 minutes and, and make this video and put it all out there and do everything we can to answer any questions that have been asked recently. And the easiest way to do it, honestly, is to put it in a video, let you guys comment and, um, you know, answer from there. I think it's the easiest way to do it. And I actually forgot to show you. So the first thing my wife planted was actually potatoes. And I'm going to tell you right now, everything you see green that's about a foot tall or higher is potatoes. And it's ridiculous. Like, it is all potato. And if any of y'all know me, I'm Irish. Potato is a, it's a close place to my heart. You know, you can do a lot with potato. So you make it into vodka, you can make it into mashed potatoes and baked potatoes and scallion. I mean, you guys get my point. It, it's a glorious, glorious thing. But I'm going to sign off now, and um, if you guys got any questions that I can hopefully answer, if anybody's actually looking into trying to start homesteading and, and doing these things, I, I do a ton of research, and I'm learning every day about how it actually goes on. So feel free to ask me. I will do my best to answer, and if I don't know the answer, I'll promise that I'll have it within the next couple of hours, because that's actually how I operate. So... Jasper signing off. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you.